What is a wall to you? What are the walls that you want to build to protect yourself? What are the walls that you want to tear and you know, break down? Walls give us a sense of safety and security. We hide behind them. We even build communities behind them. There's a sense of trust behind that safety barrier. But on the flip side, they can be divisive and stifle growth. I think that for communities to grow and connect better, we need to challenge the way that we look at walls. Ever since I was young, I've been fascinated to break things down, tear things apart, deconstructing things instead of building up more and more walls. Because I believe that by breaking down walls, we can break down barriers of all kinds and improve our lives. And I happen to be an architect. I still find the same joy in taking down physical walls, but I've also found that the, by breaking down the more abstract, the intangible walls, they're just as meaningful, if not more impactful. We have social barriers, environmental, commercial, digital, and even intergenerational boundaries. But the question is, are you ready for what you might see behind those walls when you tear them down? What does it take to break the walls? Ready to confront the social barriers and build new possibilities? Can we imagine breaking the wall that's separate to build that trust that integrates? In many ways, COVID-19 accelerated the need to answer some of these questions. COVID highlighted some of these issues for our local communities and our migrant workers. Imagine living in a cramped room with dozens of others at a time when social distancing is a matter of life and death. If one person gets the virus, chances are everyone else will be infected. How can we help? The first step, well, is to break down our own walls of ego. We don't have all the answers, so we speak to other people. We combine ideas and expertise across the region. In response to the infection rates of dormitory workers in Singapore, we rallied a suite of small medium enterprises to come together in this crucial time to support our nation. The result was a blueprint of, for the rapid building of a temporary modular shelter, which we call it the Together Shelter. But taking down these barriers wasn't exactly straightforward. One of the challenges was that the solid panel walls were running low because of high demand. These constraints turned out to be an opportunity to do something different. And in times of crisis, nobody wants to feel alone. Being trapped within solid walls isn't ideal. So we wanted a shelter which was light and provided a greater sense of space. We used a rather translucent material as the envelope for the shelter. At a fraction of its usual cost, this shelter provided security, hygiene, insulation, and durability without compromising safety. The idea of sustainability comes in with the potential to re-adopt these structures after its uses, such as urban farms and community shelters. In the larger scheme of things, this was not just about a temporary shelter. It is an effort to help to restore the dignity of our migrant friends and weave them back into our social fabric. In breaking walls to bring cultures and communities together, we can do the same for our own families, closer to each other, closer together, closer to nature. I grew up in Borneo where bonding with nature is only second to family bonding. I remember hiking almost every other weekend through those amazing terrains and spaces of wonder in a tropical forest. It amazed me how nature sustains itself so simply. Naturally, when I'm in the city, I constantly wonder how do you get closer to nature through thoughtful design. In this project, we wanted to bring the wonder of nature from the outside to the inside. 
And to do this, we broke walls to transform the existing housing model. For example, for the townhouses, we broke the unit party walls to include a wedge-shaped courtyard garden and that will allow more lights and natural ventilation to the centre of the townhouses. These are simple ways of breaking the conventional, value-adding to the banal utilitarian spaces for better use. If we begin with respecting the natural backdrop and treading lightly on the existing terrain, it is only natural that we put nature into the centre of the design. And with environmentally sensitive ways and light touches, we add in eco ponds, swells, wetlands, and when nature starts to blend in with the community programming, these experiences hold those spaces that brings the community even closer together. The synergy results in a natural ecosystem that requires very minimal maintenance. And this is why we call the project Mirage, because it's reflective of nature through the ways of our lives. Mirage dissolves the environmental barrier, resulting in a timeless sense of architecture, one that grows and flows gracefully with nature. Growth and time are two crucial factors in the commercial world. Businesses are constantly looking for ways to grow faster. What are the walls that are physically preventing them from growing? In a building, usually you have many seen and unseen spaces that obstruct growth. One of such unseen spaces are contained within the walls that hold up the fire escape staircases. Typically, each core needs two fire sta escape staircases to comply with the safety regulation. But by breaking such wall, we can expose what used to be inside and bring it to the outside. These spaces are usually often overlooked, so I decided to flip the convention and bring the humble fire exit out to the open. The result is an expansion of community space on every floor and created many spaces for people to bump into one another, to meet and mingle and make many meaningful connections. We tailored this for the startups, small office, home office, with adaptive and flexible walls, walls that can be reconfigured to suit the nimble lifestyle. This is especially relevant today, where working from home, not only more convenient, but living with work should be more conducive and comfortable. While I re-examined and broke walls for these users, it served as a hotbed for the business-to-business -business networks to flourish among the startup occupants and others as well. Every wall that I reconnect, reconstruct or break down is to connect people and the businesses together. Both are part of this important symbiotic process. So if you create something that is loved by the people it serves, then architecture will thrive. Speaking about thriving, the e-commerce sales worldwide is expected to grow by 500% within the next couple of years. This is because of the convenience of online shopping. On the other hand, walking through many of the luxury malls in Singapore, it is difficult not to be in awe of the space and the experience. So wouldn't it be nice if we have this experience extended to digital shopping? How do you allow shoppers to enjoy the magic of both worlds? So we aim to break this wall that separates between the physical and digital commerce by extending the convenience of the clicks to meet the luxury of physical interaction. We challenge the outdated typology by tipping the iceberg and to reveal and celebrate what's underneath. Traditionally, e-commerce operations happen in the background. And imagine if there's a way to showcase it up front. And this maximizes the opportunity to showcase a gallery of display rather than just a dress up front counter only. I believe this is just the beginning of a paradigm shift 
in uncovering multiple touch points for the consumers. Powered with 5G and AI, there is no limit to these new and exciting interaction formats with the co-workers, families and friends, evoking feeling of awe and fascination in an architecture that breaks the world of time and age. Ten years from now, one in four Singaporeans will be 65 years or older, and more will stretch closer to 100 years of age. The elderly population is expected to double by 2030 across the region. Now, how many of you have seen local nursing homes in this region? Yet today, most nursing homes are dowdy centres where elders dwell with little to do except to count for the remaining days. This is uh, because that nursing homes remain a taboo among Asian families with little concerted effort to improve the quantity and the quality of it. This is a depressing thought, especially when life expectancy continues to lengthen. Our elders deserve better. My concept here breaks that wall of perception of what a nursing home can be. It is a basis for co-housing programs that harnesses the synergy of students, young working families, and elderly residents. We call this Lenang. In the Malay language, the name suggests happiness, and no one is less. These independent yet unifying towers are designed to accommodate the needs for the respective co-housing group, while the co-living and the co-working all happens on the ground floor. We wanted the ground floor to become a permeable space, allowing the development to be seamlessly part of a larger public space, literally without offence. It is porous, it reaches out to the public parklands and other lakes to prioritise the connections within community and beyond. To sustain itself, it is filled with revenue-generating urban farms instead of having more and more swimming pools and tennis courts. This urban farm grows through the ground floor, extends on the vertically on the facade and over the rooftop as well. At Lenang, each generation can be both a source of service and a source of income to one another. And this creates an open, modern farm with a full suite of farming infrastructure. Even on the cascading rooftop, this communal spirit of farming can be enjoyed by everyone, not just the penthouse unit owners only. You know, instead of buying a car parking space, why not buy a garden patch on the rooftop instead? Instead of having more physical walls, why not have more green, breathable fences? Here, each individual unit is also fitted with a garden. Instead of walls, we have centuries of plants to provide that privacy within the res for the residents within their own home. These farms and individual gardens are supported efficiently and cost-effectively by the same irrigation system. And this allows the freedom for the residents to simply plant and plant anywhere they desire. From a private garden to showcasing it, in the communal farm. The space and infrastructure give rise to a meaningful community program as well. For example, students can offer tuition to the young and IT tech support to the elderly. Imagine if they can earn their rental rebates from doing so. Meanwhile, the elderly can offer daycare and tend to the farms for the community. You can imagine how happy they'll be by getting rebates for their monthly maintenance fees. Young professional families, they bring in the vibrancy and job opportunities. This synergy forms a nexus of bond that extends to the surrounding neighbourhood, thriving in a brighter and greener community of tomorrow. Great buildings and architecture have to be complemented with great programmes in a sense that the hardware needs the software, but both requires the hardware. Our role is to curate the activities purposefully for the communities through within the space and place. It is an organic 
and dynamic experience. It's never about the building. It's never about the object. It's never about living in silos. Historically, walls give us landmarks and notional boundaries that can be divisive or unifying. Today, our decision on how we build them, break them, transform them can have serious consequences and impact. In building a wall that is divisive, we may isolate and stifle growth. Break the wall tactfully, strategically. We can build communities together and grow. So are you ready to break your walls and see the possibilities behind them? I say we shall break down more walls together, challenge the norm, boldly imagine. Let's go beyond and explore the boundless possibilities.